My name is Cindy Sheehan, and in 2004, my son Casey was killed on April 4th in Iraq. And, you know, we always believed, and he believed also, that the war was wrong, that it was, um, you know, based on lies. And Casey, as a matter of fact, before he went, said he couldn't kill anybody. Um, and he was a mechanic, so I didn't understand why he would have to kill anybody. But he was just there for a few days, actually, when he was killed in combat. And so, <clears throat> before he was killed, being against the war, we really didn't have any uh, avenue to express that. And after Casey was killed, I started to research more because I lost my job, because I, they said that I was taking too much time off of work. So I had a lot of time to research and reach out, and I, I got in contact with some other families who felt the same way we did. As a matter of fact, somebody whose son was killed in the same battle Casey was killed in. His name was Michael Mitchell. We got to be good friends with his family. We started an organization called Gold Star Families for Peace, and we just started to try to um, bring attention to those lies, how people on both sides, the Iraqi and Americans were dying for lies and for the crimes of our government. And so it was in, I started that organization, Gold Star Families for Peace, in uh, the end of 2004, the beginning of 2005. And like I said, I lost my job, so I had a lot of time on my hands, so I started traveling around the country. And I started reaching out to other organizations like Military Families Speak Out and Veterans for Peace. And so I was speaking really actually all over the country. And in, on June 16, 2005, I testified uh, at a congressional hearing about the Downing Street memos um, and the lies that led to my son's death. And then so... Um, so I was already starting to become a little bit known, and after that uh, experience testifying in front of Congress against the war, you know, I got people like Fox News, like Sean Hannity, like Glenn Beck, like uh, Rush Limbaugh on my case. Uh, you know, how dare a mother whose son is a hero, a war hero, who died for our freedom, who died protecting the country, how dare she speak out? And so then on August um, 6th of that same year, I went to Crawford, Texas, and I wanted to have a meeting with George Bush to ask him what noble cause, because he had said a few days previously that all of the families could rest assured that their um, loved ones died for a noble cause in Iraq. And not one of the people, he was at a press conference, not one of the um, people there from the media asked him what was a noble cause. So I thought, I have a voice, why don't I go to Texas and ask him? I didn't even know where Crawford was at the time. And a, a couple of things conspired <laughs> to give me that limelight that uh, is so lacking. I mean, so this is uh, 12 years since the war, 11 years since my son was killed almost, almost 10 years since I went to Crawford. The wars are still going on, they're in some cases expanding, and I'm still working, but of course the anti-war movement or the peace movement is no longer in that limelight. But when I decided to go to Crawford and I went down there to where George Bush was to ask him what noble cause, I didn't know that the corporate media, that there was a White House press corps, well I knew there was a White House press corps, I didn't know they traveled with them, I didn't know they spent the whole summer in Crawford, Texas with George Bush. And I want to tell you, there's nothing going on in Crawford, Texas, except a blinking a stoplight. And so I think that it became, you know, something for them to cover, so they covered it. However, if it wasn't something that was compelling, it wouldn't have stayed in the coverage. And I think many people around the country and indeed around the world who felt the same way as I did, didn't know how to express it and finally there was an expression of this uh, sentiment that they had been feeling and so that's how it got in that that's how I believe that our protests got into the limelight.
um, in 2005 and how, you know, I um, it almost like it, I couldn't go anywhere without being recognized and people uh, either <laughs> were really upset with me or really happy with me when they recognized me. And so it really, and I think how the coverage got shut down was people started to hear the truth. And the corporate media was long in collaboration, I believe, with the Pentagon and with the war machine in hiding that truth. And so there was a media sensation, and then there was a, a figure that they couldn't, uh, you know, I, I can't be uh, dissuaded from my protests or what, or telling the truth. I And so then they tried to uh, marginalize me, then they tried to demonize me, and nothing like that worked. So then they had to actually shut the message down. In 06, uh, they just stopped covering anything that the anti-war movement or I was involved with. I Even the when the Democrats came back into the uh, majority, and at least in the House of Representatives, even the so-called liberal media stopped covering me because I was saying the exact same things about the Democrats that I said about the Republicans, and they didn't appreciate that. There's been one thing after the other that has proven <clears throat> as correct that, you know, anti-war movement, the peace movement, and when the torture report came out, the Senate torture report came out in December, of course there wasn't anything in it that we didn't know already know about, but um, there was, there's, the thing that disturbed me the most was of course that um, the Obama administration was not going to investigate further or hold anybody in the Bush administration or regime accountable. I mean, I live in Northern California, not that far from Berkeley, and John Yoo, the person who wrote the, poli the regime's policy on torture, is a law professor there. And so, um, it's just very distressing that Don Kirikou uh, was in prison for years for trying to expose this. Uh, Chelsea Manning will be in prison for at least another couple decades for trying to expose the war crimes and crimes against humanity. And George Bush and Dick Cheney and Condoleezza Rice and John Yoo and Rumsfeld and Gates and all of them are profiting. They're, they're having a nice life. George Bush gets to paint his paintings, hold his grand new grandchild, and you know, my son is dead forever. And so many millions of people are dead or displaced or their lives are destroyed. Still in Iraq. Children are being born with um, deformities, birth defects. Young children are dying of cancer at horrific rates. And the people in the Bush regime and Obama regime now, because they're just as big of war criminals, are, are having happy lives. And I don't think stuff like this will stop unless these people are held accountable and held responsible. I live in a very conservative um, place and right by an Air Force base and yeah, you know, I don't have any friends either. And so it's real, it's just really hard. And, you know, people don't understand that torture is not a human value. Torture is, um, is obscene and you know the punchline of the torture report isn't that it is inhumane it is a war crime it is banned by our law and international law the punchline for these people was it didn't even work and you know so at, we as human beings should be saying you know we don't want anybody tortured 
at you know their expanse of if we're going for any kind of information and so I think the chances of justice is very small because it's asking one criminal to hold another criminal accountable. My position is that we shouldn't have these illegal and immoral wars to create veterans and you know Chris Kyle I wrote a I wrote an article not too long ago called Casey versus Kyle about how Casey said he couldn't kill anybody and he died and Chris Kyle wanted to kill more people you know and I think the veterans that I know that are the healthiest are the ones that realize they were used that they were screwed over and are still being screwed over by the government and they're the ones who are speaking out against what um, is going on against the war machine or you know whatever but um, yeah, I got. I have my red sweater on. I'm a socialist. I I think that uh, health care is a human right, and mental health care is a human right. And we wouldn't need a VA if we had universal single payer health care for everybody in this country. And we would have be hard pressed to even create soldiers if uh, education was also a human right in this country. So. I think the best way to treat our young people is not to create harm veterans and uh, and then absent that which it is absent is that yeah I mean they should be able to access mental health care and emotional health care and physical health care it shouldn't be such a battle for the for everybody I mean we still have veterans from Vietnam dying on the streets. Uh, more uh, Vietnam veterans have killed themselves since the war than were actually killed in the war. And that was, you know, 60,000 people that were killed in the war. So it's just shameful. And it's, a sh it's shameful that these patriots stick up for this country that treat um, veterans and, and really all humans like crap. And so it is a it is a very uh, shameful situation that we find ourselves in. And Casey, the way he was, he would have been very damaged if he survived and came home. But at least he would be alive, and at least there would be hope. But then I know so many mothers and fathers whose whose um, sons or daughters uh, committed suicide after they got home. So you're you're so thrilled that your child or your loved one returns, but then, you know, they they don't ever really return. And even if they're like Kyle and uh, Chris Kyle and love the war and love their job, obviously they're also still harmed. When um, Casey was first killed and we were first on this journey, it was very comforting to be around other parents who, you know, had the same experience and who felt the same way. It was almost like we could be ourselves and not be judged, it, you know, because how, however painful it is and however your life has changed and, and been destroyed and you know, smashed to pieces, you still laugh. You still have uh, other children and other lives, you know, other parts of your life that don't go away just because you lose a child. So then, um, you know, other people would look at me and say, oh, she's not grieving enough or, oh, she's grieving too much. And but when you're with other uh, mothers or fathers who um, have gone through the same thing, that's not even a question. You can just be yourself without worrying about it. Now I know mothers whose children have been killed by cops and you know that kind of situation that we have um, going on. But what keeps me going is that from the very beginning what I wanted to do was end these wars and end, um, you, you know the US policy of rushing straight to war and lying and exposing the lies and really telling the truth and getting the truth out there to as many people as possible and so it's still you know what I set out to do still hasn't occurred so that keeps me going but now I have five grandchildren and you know I look at them and and I look at their future and I don't see that it's very bright and 
then I I know that for one of my grandchildren there's millions and millions and millions in harm's way because of the US Empire and I just can't stand that and so every morning when I get up I I think what what's the best thing I can do today to try to uh, make a brighter future for the children of the world.